With my first playthrough of Armored Core 6 down, I really wanted to make a video to discuss the things that I've learned. But before we dive in, please complete the training. I promise you it's well worth it. You get good gear. And on top of that, you learn the nuances of the different frames. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. The first thing that I learned throughout my time with Armored Core 6 is that failure is fine. And the reason why I say that is because it has a very generous checkpoint system. Essentially, once you're in a boss fight, all you have to do is restart. Now, you can restart mid fight if you feel like things aren't going your way. But I implore you to continue the fight to learn patterns and try to get that boss down as far as possible. So therefore, you can learn and adapt. After you figured out the attack pattern, the next step is to figure out what weapons are going to be the most efficient against this enemy type. Now, while trial and error does not seem appealing, I really feel like Armored Core 6 does a really good job of constantly keeping the players engaged because every encounter is fast. Being able to restart almost immediately after you fail an encounter is something that I can't help but appreciate because I would be incredibly frustrated and I think a lot of players would have quit this game quickly if you were required to travel some distance to get to that boss. Now, there are some missions that do that, but for the major boss fights, all you have to do is just restart the encounter and you're right there. And I know it sounds crazy that the first piece of advice you hear is that failure is fine, but it's honestly the truth. Because you have to understand with the Armored Core series, it's all about experimentation and strategy and adaptability. And the only way you can do that is if you fail. And guess what? If you keep that type of mentality, that failure is fine, you're going to have a lot more fun with the game when you're experimenting in these fights to try to figure out what's the most optimal path forward. Next up, let's talk about builds. Now, before we begin, the footage you're seeing is from the air boss fight. This is one of the final boss fights in the game. This is because I chose the <laughs> the mercenary money path. <laughs> so don't judge. It is recommended that you have multiple builds of different frame types in Armored Core 6 because that type of diversity is very helpful. When I first fought air, I was using my medium frame with a number of armaments that I was utilizing to get me to the end of the game because it had worked so far. The build you're seeing is what I like to call the bully build. This build really differs from what I'm used to because it has an emphasis on high damage and high defense. Surprisingly, with that lower frame, it actually has high mobility as well. It's just not suited for any type of hovering whatsoever because you'll immediately drop like a rock. But two chain guns and two stun needles, I immediately break pulse shields and I can do continuous damage that will absolutely wipe and murder most enemies in this game. By the end of the game, I had four or five frames, and each of these builds were vastly different from the other, but I built this heavy frame because one, I didn't have one, and two, I knew that if I was going to beat Air, who is essentially this finesse boss, I was going to have to absolutely brute force her, which means I have to tank a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage because that pulse shield sucks. What you need to do in this fight, basically, as a tip, is that you want to bait that sword slash. The first time that sword slash comes out, stun needle or whatever heavy weapon you're going to use to break down that pulse shield and then just punish as quickly as possible. The more impact damage you do, the more often I are stunned and the more damage you're going to do. This was honestly one of the best fights in the game for me because I just had fun brute forcing this enemy. Customization has always been a tenant of the Armored Core series, and I love the fact that AC6 does not stray away from that. It really wants you to play around and create these different builds, because once you do, you'll quickly learn about what frames are effective in the different scenarios and the multitude of boss fights. Moving on, let's talk about the arena and why it's crucial for two reasons. The first reason is that it gives you valuable experience when you are combating different frames which means you are going to see light frames, medium frames, and heavy frames. You're going to see a vast number of different weapons and also different strategies employed by these AI. It is important that you go in there and engage in these battles because they are going to make you more efficient when you start fighting some of these high level bosses. You are going to be fighting multiple frames when you get to chapters four and five. 
And some of these can be really difficult because you're going to be fighting a heavy frame and a light frame. And you're going to have to be able to adapt and adjust quickly. And fighting these in the arena will only help you be prepared for what's to come. The second reason, and possibly the most important, is that you're rewarded with OST chips. And these are very important because it allows you to further optimize your frame. If you want to unlock expansions, which will allow you to equip certain shields like the Pulse Shield, which will save your life in a pinch. If you want to buff damage, defense, or increase the effectiveness of your repair kits, you need OST chips. You will need to go into the arena. And believe me, you get a nice little chunk of change too. It doesn't seem like much, but they do build and add up as you're going along. And I feel like the arena fights are just good practice anyway. And I love the fact that they really don't get hard until around B tier, but by that time frame, you are far and away the more effective frame because you're able to preview what you're about to fight so you can go into the assembly and bring in the correct weapons that you'll need to break down their defenses quickly and kill them. I really felt like I overlooked the arena during my first half of the game. I really wasn't paying attention to it, but I realized that the OST chips were pretty much only unlocked in the arena and then I became obsessed with it because even the smallest increases were incredibly helpful. I feel like if you're going to rock a light frame in this game, you are going to need a number of OST upgrades because they do help out with your combat effectiveness. The next piece of advice I can give people is that if you feel like you're running low on funds, just sell items you don't use. I know that sounds crazy, but when you sell them, you actually sell them at the price you bought them at. So you're not being punished at all. And I don't know if From Software realized that they were doing this, but as I was playing through the game and I was buying new items, I was going in and stressing out because I was fighting Balteus and I did not have, in my opinion, the correct weapons to really combat him and be effective. And I went, I don't have enough money for any of this stuff because people were trying to give me advice and say, nah, man, just use two shotguns, use subbies, whatever. And I said, I don't have the money. And then I went into the shop and said, oh shit, I can just sell everything for pretty much the price I bought it at. So that helps you with your experimentation. So please, when you can, if you're in a tight pinch and you do not have money because you're trying to be stingy with those frame upgrades, do yourself a favor and sell. You'll end up getting your money back and I promise you, you will feel a lot better about yourself. I know this is gonna be kind of niche, but when you're doing these AI partner fights, please, please, Help your partner as often as possible. I know that more than likely you're going to see them as a distraction or as bait or whatever, but don't think of them that way. What you're gonna wanna do is while they have the attention of that AC, you're gonna wanna do as much damage and attack them quickly. You're gonna wanna help them. And even though you're being attacked from that other AC, you can probably dodge around a lot of those attacks and take minimal damage. But the reason why it's so important is because if you do not help your partner, they are never going to do enough damage to that enemy where you can effectively say, cool, now it's just a 1v1. That's not going to happen. It's more than likely going to end up a 2v1 because in the later fights, they heal a bunch at least three times. So you are going to have to help your AI partner out because you're going to want them to stick with you for as long as humanly possible. <laughs> I found that out the hard way in some of the later fights that if I just happen to conduct an ambush and just leave my partner to their own devices, they will absolutely get killed. I don't understand why they get murdered so quickly, but I felt like it was unfair for me to just leave my partner on their own because I knew that they could be bait for that second fight. So please make sure you help your partners out. I know that you're just thinking to yourself that I have to focus on all these different attacks coming at you from this one enemy. Why would I help them out? It's very important because you will find a higher success rate if you help your AI partner out and then they can be used as bait for that other opponent you happen to be fighting because for whatever reason, the AI will only focus on your teammate. So before we end the video, I just want to address the fact that I really didn't get too in depth or discuss pretty much at all 
about any type of mechanic in this game. And the reason why I did that was because if you do the training and you complete chapter one, you will know all there is to know about combat in this game. After that, it's pretty much just customizing your frame, understanding that it's okay to fail in this game because of the quick restart, and then making modifications as you go along. This is a game that desperately wants you to use every tool at your disposal. Whether that's a pulse shield, whether that's a laser sword, whatever, doesn't matter. The game wants you to be as effective as possible and pretty much play your way. So by the time you get near the end of the game, you're going to understand the type of frame you're going to want to use. For me, I utilized a lot of missiles because I wanted to do a lot of impact damage. That was pretty much my entire focus. I used a lot of plasma weapons because I just want to absolutely melt enemies. I recommend that you mix, match, play along, emphasize that trial and error, and understand that the best part about this game is just realizing that failure is a part of it. And that it's not even that bad if you die because you know damn well you can just click restart checkpoint and you're back in the fight. I know that there are going to be a number of players who quit this game because of Balteus. Because chapter one was a warm up. And Balteus is far different than any enemy you will fight. He's faster, he has that pulse shield, all that stuff. But honestly, once you get past Balteus, the game is so much easier. It really is. And you can utilize any strategy to beat Baltas. I recommend you really bring a ton of missiles with you for impact damage. But once you get past Baltas, and believe me, he's manageable, he's beatable. There are a number of guides out there that can help you if you need it. But once you get past Baltas, the rest of this game is honestly a lot easier than I expected. Which was surprising because some of the Armored Core games were really unforgiving, really punishing. They weren't accessible. Armored Core 6 is probably the most accessible in the entire franchise. And that's the truth. And I really feel like if you just have a good mentality, you complete that training and you really pay attention to what you're doing in that first chapter because everything you do matters. I think you'll beat Balteus. You'll struggle a little bit, but you'll beat him. And then afterwards, you're going to realize that the rest of the game is surprisingly easy because now you understand how the game wants you to play it. Now you understand that you have to really focus on customization. And that is going to do it for this video. So if you like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. If you happen to be playing Armored Core 6 right now, please tell me how your experience is going. Let me know if there's anything you're struggling with. I really do like helping out new Armored Core players. And if you are an experienced Armored Core player and you want to impart some advice to people, you want to talk about things that you've learned while playing through this game or being this game, because I'm pretty sure there's some animals out there who've gotten the secret ending, leave a comment below. I am Ken from Pixelated Thoughts, and I'll talk to you next time.